The World 505 Championships are held yearly, alternating between Europe and the rest of the world. Cork, on the south coast of Ireland, offered a choice of open sea or immense sheltered harbour to over 70 sailors of this class who came to compete in the 1982 event. Close to the harbour mouth, the village of Crosshaven was an ideal base for this international gathering, providing high calibre facilities for boats and crews. Crosshaven is also the home of the oldest sailing club in the world. The Royal Cork Yacht Club, hosts to these championships, have long been associated with the staging of world-class events. For over 250 years, members of this club have sailed these waters and today there exists a fine tradition of seamanship and an impressive fleet ranging from sailing dinghies to ocean racers and cruising yachts. They have come a long way indeed from the sailing craft of yore. 505s are now raced in 25 countries around the world, the most prominent being the United Kingdom, France, the United States, Germany, Switzerland, Japan, and a number of African countries such as Kenya, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. Over seven and a half thousand boats have been registered, of which something like two thousand are racing currently. Generally, the class has strengthened, and the 505s have become an extremely popular boat to sail. The chairman of the Royal Cork Race Committee, who has organized this year's event, is Arthur Baker. We're very pleased to see the 505s back with us in the Royal Cork, as we had a fleet of them here once, and it is our aim and our hope that we will see a resurgence of interest in the 505s, so that they would once again be an integral part of the sailing activities of the Royal Cork. The 505 class has always attracted a truly international group of dedicated, competitive and enthusiastic sailors. This year, representatives of 15 nations have gathered here to test their skill and stamina against the elements and each other in the six races of the championship. These world-class yachtsmen include many title holders in other dinghy classes, such as Steve Benjamin. The main reason I sail 505s is simply because I enjoy it. I think it's a wonderful boat, especially when the breeze comes up and you're planing upwind and off the wind. It's a very stimulating boat to sail because the, the boat's so light and the, the sails are so, so large for the relative size. I think it... Uh, it's, it's one of the most challenging boats to sail because of these reasons of, of the large sail plan. Uh, I've been sailing 470s for a number of years and I find that when sailing a 505 uh, it's, it's really quite a lot more of a challenge, especially in heavy air. I also find that, that those experiences on the 505 help my 470 sailing a great deal because I'm not, not so scared on the 470 anymore after being on the 50. The experience of the U.S. team is impressive, but the Swedish are formidable opponents and are also here in strength. Krista Bergström. Compared to other dinghies, it's a dinghy which is nice to sail in light wind. It's marvelous to sail in strong winds. Uh, and it's a strong boat. You can always be out sailing. You will never uh, be afraid of the boat breaking and so on. Australian champion Neil Harrison has travelled halfway around the world to compete in the Irish event. Where are you going, mate? I think the best part of 505s is um, the racing it has to offer and kind of like winning a race in close competition. I think that's probably about the best feeling you get, you know, after a really good last work and you come out on top, it's really good. And this same spirit of Competition, skill and enjoyment was evident throughout the championships.
crews worked hard and displayed a great deal of skill in the handling of their boats. With a large entry, the organizational task is daunting. Accommodation of crews, storage of dinghies, launching on race day, all require a practice skill. Participants were loud in their praise of the Royal Cork Yacht Club. The large fleet was launched each day with a minimum of difficulties and made its way to the race area outside the harbour. Race officer for the championship series was international yachtsman Clayton Love Jr. There is a new standard coming into um, running international championships uh, and I would hope that we are somewhere near the top of that standard now. Uh, so far from the 505s we've got every encouragement that we are. I think especially in the courses, it's terribly important I think to take courses well offshore, clear of headlands, to get clear wind and as little tight as possible and we're fortunate in having that in an area between Poorhead and Roaches Point, which is about 45 minutes sailing from here. The merit of it is, of course, uh, that you get this clear open water and, and then it's the competitor skill which comes through. Now, there are obviously problems with it because it is three miles from Roaches Point, the center of the course, and the biggest problem, of course, is, is, is the mark problem, it's in deep water. We then devised the scheme of having very small marks with, in fact, disposable moorings. In other words, we can cut those adrift if we get into trouble. And we use these day glow flags on mark boats which stand by. Long before the competitors set out, the race committee laid the Olympic course, checking and cross-checking wind direction and all relevant data. Watch was kept for any changes during the race, and rescue boats stood by to shepherd any boats with problems. But now it's time for business. The pre-race tension builds, the determination to win a 505 world event dominates. All sailors have qualified for their place here. They are utterly dedicated, tough, strong and skillful, performing at world-class level. Five, four, three, two, one, now! With such a large fleet, the gate start was most effective. The 505s in full flight on starboard, aiming for the committee boat. They seem to hold a collision course and then, at the last moment, move astern and away for the weather mark.
After three days racing in a Gale Struck series, the Americans Knopp and Lewis were top on the points table, followed closely by Bergstrom of Sweden and Schoener of Denmark, who shared second positions with the United Kingdom pairing of Colclough and Barnes fourth overall. However, as the fleet came to the line in this particular race, Hamlin of the United States led in a comfortable position, ahead of the Australian Harrison and Eklund of Sweden. But not everyone was quite so lucky. This year's event has been described as the heavy weather championship. There had been no shortage of wind, and in the big seas, many boats had difficulties, including the inevitable capsize. Mainly, it was bent masts and broken halyards. Right, we got the half a A rescue boat with five O's on tow was not an uncommon sight. But if you're in good shape, a blow is exhilarating and gives a ride to remember. The 505 was designed at the request of the French Association in 1952 by Englishman John Westall and soon became internationally raced. Through the years, the development of the class has been a continuous process. Close liaison between builders, sailmakers and sailors has exacted higher and still higher performances from the standard design. Each sailor tunes his boat finely hoping for that little extra that makes a champion. The tuning of uh, five was, is one of the most interesting parts of the boat, particularly to me. Uh, recently we've been developing new mass and sail combinations for the 505, and uh, I think it's quite interesting because you are permitted the light and heavy air sails to, to try to develop these sails and, and see the differences between them. Uh, we just came up with a new light air, light air jib. Seems to be uh, quite effective for the light conditions. It's a little fuller in the top and flatter down low. Uh, also, it's possible to sail with this jib with a tighter rig and uh, eliminating some of the head stay sag, which allows higher pointing in light air. Um, well, if you haven't got a fast boat, you can still win, but it um, doesn't get you out of trouble. Like if you've got a fast boat, you make a mistake, you can always come back. But basically, if you haven't got a fast boat, it's very hard to win. <laughs> well, we've got these little gadgets on here called hydraulics. Um, not any of the other 505s in the world have got them except the people in Australia. And they're quite nifty, like upwind, you can play them all the time, and they're really good, but they're a bit expensive. So I suppose that's why too many boats haven't got them. Why we have chosen the boat with the chute uh, is because we sail in Sweden and small uh, between islands and so on, so you need to take the spinnaker down very quickly. And uh, in a small country like Sweden, I think uh, that we should try to keep the class, the boats, uh, as like at each other. Uh, because if we start to change with boats like the Americans have done, I think it will destroy the class. But some change is inevitable. At international gatherings, many innovations are to be seen, such as this adjustable centerboard pivot. This next arrangement allows the spreaders to be adjusted while sailing. Controlled by this sliding strut, the dynamic action of mast bending is not only impressive, but effective, allowing rapid changes to be made while sailing.
a fresh breeze ripples the sails at the start of another day's racing. Rigging up at the Crosshaven Marina, the competitors speculate on ever-changing conditions which create a constant challenge to the skill of all teams. One of the first away was veteran 505 sailor and former world champion Marcel Buffet. European champions Nielsen and Avon in the Swedish boat followed closely. The Zimbabwe pair eagerly make for the race area. Schuller and Kemp of Denmark hope to improve their overall fourth position. American teams have won the previous three World Series and Gary Knopp and Cam Lewis, high on the points table, look as if they can take it to the US a fourth time. But they still have another race to run and have Britain's 505 veterans, Peter Kolkloff and Harold Barnes, and the Swedish and Danish teams to contend with. But besides the competitive spirit, these world championships were notable for a degree of unanimity amongst the competitors not often seen before. There's no shortage of wind and the five O's make the most of it. The 505 is one of the most exceptional dinghies to sail. Fast, highly tuned, strong and stable in heavy seas. Competitors were enthused by the way the boat handled in the ever-changing conditions. As they approached the lured mark for the first time, Bergstrom made it just ahead of Knopp and Lewis, but not for long. These 
high-performance dinghies showed great stability in the heavy seas that tested each sailor and gave thrilling reaches. There were plenty of opportunities for crews to stretch on trapeze. As they raced to the finish, it was Benjamin and Edmondson in first place. Stand by! Go! Oh. But Gary Knopp and Cam Lewis, with three firsts, a third and a fourth, end the fifth day's racing unbeaten. World champions in 82. The subsequent race decided the placing of Colcliffe and Barnes second, Benjamin and Edmondson third, Schoner and Kemp fourth, Bergstrom and Halberg fifth. Another world championship draws to a close, with yet another title going to the US. Knopp and Lewis have proved their ability in the heavy going and received their well-earned award. Finally, what did former champions Peter Colclough and Marcel Buffet think of their 505 sailing? Yes, it's great fun sailing at 505. Uh, it gives me... Uh, all exhilarating sailing I want, without having to spend three weeks on the continent doing a flying Dutchman circuit. You know, gives you plenty of boats to sail against in your own country, with the, still getting plenty of exhilaration. Oh, 1958. C'était l'époque où toutes les revues euh, nautiques et puis tout le monde. Because the 505 is certainly the best and the most formidable dinghy. You can see it. Just look at the shape. The shape of that boat, you can see it's the best. Let's say it is the 505 which keeps me in good shape. Selling 505, I stay fit.
Oh, I just happened to have one with me, so I thought I might as well sail it. But, you know, say if I had a 470 or something like that, I'd probably sail that. But they're a good boat. The people who sail them are really good people, and I just enjoy myself when I go to Rugata.